All right, if you've ever thought about, hey, why is it that so many people, I wouldn't say complain, but they definitely speak out against rental properties and how much they cost. Well, in my experience, these are the three things that absolutely make you bleed money in real estate investing and rental property investing. Check them out. Guys, my name is Dominique Pereira. Ask Dom that everywhere on the internet. If uh, you're interested in real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and anything lifestyle related that's just about doing cool stuff, I'm your guy. Check it out, check out my channel. Like, subscribe, and just appreciate all your support. Today, we're gonna be talking about three things that in my experience, just makes you bleed and hemorrhage money in rental property management and real estate investing. Right into it. The number one thing that you want to worry about, this is after you already have your property, is water. Water is not your friend in real estate investing and rental property management. Make sure that you take into account how to properly manage damage with regards to water. Yeah, hands down, this is like one of my biggest frustrations in managing my properties. Now, what am I talking about? If your roof is leaking, right, that isn't gonna go away by itself. It's not. And sometimes you don't know where it's coming from. You might see a spot somewhere in particular, but your roof might have a hole somewhere else. I had a roof with a hole that wasn't leaking. And then I had a roof with no hole that was leaking. It's absolutely insane the type of damage that long-term water can do to your property. It, it exacerbates cracks around your foundation. It messes up your foundation. It messes up your sheetrock and your drywall. Everything cosmetic that looks beautiful and nice, make sure that you understand how you can mitigate water damage and do it quickly. And this includes underneath your sink. This includes behind your refrigerator where your water is connected to your fridge. If you see any type of damage occurring, slight as it might be, address it right away. When you're doing your rehab, this is part of the mechanical phase. It's typically your water, your gas, your electrical, the things that make your house run the mechanics of your house invest proper money in making sure that it's done right stay away from shark bites behind your walls believe me your plumber is going to tell you shark bites are the way to go if they can do copper it's going to cost you a little bit more but it's going to save you headaches down the line i've had shark bites come apart behind the wall had to cut the sheetrock had to move all sorts of things to get it fixed and then just to put it back and remember and I don't wanna ramble, but when you put sheetrock back, you have to texture it if you have texture, you have to paint it again. It's just a whole other thing. So water and mechanicals. And the mechanicals is especially hard because it's behind the wall. So invest up front when you're doing your rehab to make sure it doesn't cost you more money. The second thing that's gonna cost you money and make you absolutely hemorrhage money is vacancies. I know that this is, seems pretty straightforward, but vacancies, every month that your house is vacant, that's money that doesn't come in your pocket. And the reason that's very important to take note of is because the first thing we talked about, where was your water and your mechanicals, that's money that you're giving out. So no matter if it costs $100 or $1,000, it's coming out of your account and you're leaving it. So emotionally, you're already attached to that and it's like your money. With vacancies, a lot of landlords don't realize how much money they're losing because it's they never took possession of that money. The house is vacant, so they te technically they it's money that they're not giving out. It's just money that they're not getting. The emotional connection to money that you don't have is different than money that you have and you have to pay out. Keep in mind that if you're renting a property for $1,300 a month, 
every month that that property is not rented out, you're losing $1,300. And, and you're actually gonna be losing more than that. And I'm gonna go over a little bit more on this. But most landlords are gonna just say, well, yeah, you know, we're gonna rent it out as fast as possible. But they don't really make the effort to do the showings, to put the proper pictures up, to make call back a pr prospective tenants they want to rent it out, but their actions kind of are lackadaisical and then it goes into another month of vacancy. No, go in it. Make sure you follow up. You do your due diligence to get a tenant in there because that's going to make you bleed money. Now, the other thing that we want to keep in mind with vacancy, especially when you start to get into multifamily properties, it's not just the money that the tenants aren't paying you that you're losing. On a $1,300 property, yes, you're losing $1,300 a month. But now if you have 10, 12, 15, or 20 units, when you go to refinance or restructure your deal, or when you go to get money out of that property or sell it, the one thing that comes up consistently is your occupancy rate. How occupied, how full was your building over the last two years. And this affects your rates that you're gonna get from the bank. This affects the payment that somebody is willing to pay you for your building. It affects a lot of money and a lot of things. And just because you decided on a 10 unit building, you weren't as aggressive in trying to get somebody in there for two units, uh, you know, or one unit, it might drop your occupancy rate from 90% or 95% to 80%. And all of a sudden you're paying higher interest on a refinance or you're getting a lower offer price on if you're trying to sell your building, all because you didn't act diligently enough. So vacancies absolutely make you bleed money. Keep that in mind. Last point on the ways you lose and just hemorrhage money in real estate investing is on the front of it. We, we talked about the rehab and then and, and, um, your, your maintenance costs and your mechanicals. We also talked uh, at the other side, making sure your, your vacancies are low and your occupancies are high. But the rehab when you first get your property or your purchase price when you first get your property, because we don't have the property yet and these are just numbers we don't fully grasp the work associated with ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars meaning this if you are trying to work on a property uh on the property deal that's a hundred thousand dollars and you really want it you want it for 120 the seller is at 130 you guys are thirty thousand dollars different you might just say, okay, I'll go to 120. But does that make sense for your numbers? Because you're ahead of just 20,000, you figure you'll get it somewhere else. You'll, you know, you'll figure it out as it comes. A lot of times you don't figure it out. You bleed money on the purchase price before the project even starts. That's $20,000 that you gave up without having a clear indication as to where you're gonna get it. That's sometimes two or three years of cash flow, uh, two or three years of prospective profit that you've given up. And if you have a long-term strategy, that might be okay because you're thinking, well, I'm playing a five to 10 year game. But if you have a two to three year strategy, then you're gonna be on the internet. This real estate investment is stupid, lost money, stay away from it. Well, you lost money in the beginning of it. You set yourself up for failure because you were bleeding money before you were ever in the game. Keep an eye out for these three things on how you hemorrhage and bleed money and real estate investing and you will be golden. Now, the best investment that you can make, the best way you can pay for anything in real estate investing is by liking and subscribing to this video. Number one investment tip, all right? So if you got any value, like, subscribe, give me your feedback good, bad, or ugly. I just want to know how I can bring more value to you guys. I appreciate the time that you've given me so far, and I'll see you on the other side of the internet. My name is Dominique Pereira. Catch me at AskDomNet anywhere your connectivity works.